Hello, race fans, and welcome back here to the Daytona International Speedway, where we are getting ready for the Axle to Duels right here at none other than the World Center of Racing. And this is probably going to be the most interesting night of the whole entire weekend because of the fact that we do have at least three spots open for the 500. I say three, it would normally be four, but I say three because Madison Tall pulled off an upset and won the pole for the Daytona 500, and in the process of doing that, she has locked herself in to the great American race. As for Marty Zakala, Mar Mar Marty Zakala is not here, but Marty Johnson, however, is here, and as well as Josiah Munsell, those two drivers also join Madison Tall as drivers that have locked themselves into the Daytona 500 not by pole position but by their qualifying speed. However, as for everyone else, they will have to race their way into the Daytona 500. So Andrew Ramsey, for instance, Trinity Anderson, also along with Sam and Oskin in the 05. It's not Osama Os Osman Hamid. It is um, Sam and Oskin as well as also Alita Therese, just to name a few drivers, Travis Crampton, who's driving the 98 car for this race, and that would be actually, and that actually would be pretty big for NS Racing if they were to get all four of their cars in the Daytona 500. That'd be a big accomplishment for Nathan Stapleton and a huge confidence booster uh, if he or one of his other drivers can get that Daytona 500 win. But in order to get to that point, in order to get to this Sunday, we got to get past the duels. So with that being said, the drivers are strapped into their cars. Pre-race ceremonies are just now starting to wrap up. But in order to get these 27 behemoths rolling off, we got to get the command to fire the engines to get duel number one underway. The engines have been fired, pace car is rolling off, and so are these 27 competitors. And as these drivers hit the track for their pace laps, here's your starting lineup for the for the bleh. here's your starting grid for duel number one. have taken one to go here and we will be getting ready to go green for 20 laps of action here in the first duel here in the axle to duels it's a even though it's a pretty big upset for Madison Tall for the to get this Daytona 500 pole it still has to be a little bit nerve-wracking for her teammate Travis Crampton who is in this field as well way in the back 
in the Performance Plus motor oil car, not car number 98. Because if he can make it up towards the front and stay ahead of the rest of his competitors, he will earn one of those transfer spots to lock himself into the Daytona 500. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here in this first duel. And as they come off of turn number four, the pace car is going to drop and it's going to put this field into the hands of Madison Tall and Derek Edison to get this first duel underway. 20 laps of action, two spots available in this duel. Who's going to get him? calm and cool collected start double file for at least three quarters of the track and now you have Eric Scott making a three wide underneath of Josiah Munsell and as well as Joshua Hyatt as they come off of turn number four and Madison Tall who starts on pole for the 500 is going to lead lap number one and for Madison Tall it makes no difference in where she finishes because she is going to lead the field to the green flag in the Great American Race this Sunday. But as for everyone else, it does make a difference in the starting position, but also for those drivers that must th race their way in, it makes a huge difference to see if they can make the Daytona 500 or not. Josiah Munsell and Marty Johnson, they don't have to worry about a thing because they're already locked in via their qualifying speed. But as for guys like Sam and Oskin and also Daniel Bouchard in that 47, who's way in the middle, literally in the middle of the pack, they have to race their way in and they currently hold on to those two transfer spots that are available in this duel Haley Walker in that number 25 is put up top and but she still leads the lap nonetheless Cody Smart and Jack Lagacy are to her inside and they're gonna go three wide for the race lead and now you have Jack Lagacy out front for American Motorsports it's not all American Motorsports it's just American Motorsports so to Trey Wright, I do apologize. But nonetheless, Jack Lagacy, one of Trey Wright's drivers, is out front in the Autism Speaks Ford Fusion. Down to the turn number three. Lagacy continues to hold the charge from Sam and Oskin. Eli Bright in that number 12, moving up to third, now going to try to cut to the inside of Oskin. For second, he's got a run underneath. And you also have Al Legacy right behind Eli Bright. So both American Motorsports cars are now starting to come up through the field. How about Alex Hawkins at number nine? He did not qualify for the Bud pole for the uh, for the pole qualifying uh, race. Not the pole qualifying race, but knockout qualifying this past Monday. Uh, unfortunately, because of my stupidity, I forgot to add him in one of the rosters. So I do apologize for that. But the big. But the good thing for Alex Hawkins is it doesn't make a difference in where he qualified for that for this past Monday. He's locked into the 500 nonetheless, so he has nothing to lose. However, Alita Therese in the number 71 cuts up in front of Alex Hawkins, and she just and she got just as close as second place up until this point. Kyle Langland is down to her inside and now she's put up top of a three wide situation and Kyle Langland in the number 93 goes to the point Travis Crampton in that 98 remember he has to race his way into the 500 and there's his teammate Zachary Fitzwater making a three wide for second and if Fitzy oh no sorry but if Travis can make the race all four NS Racing cars, as I said before, will be in the Daytona 500, and that would be a big accomplishment if Travis can pull that off. Kyle Langland leads lap number six. How about the Anderson sisters working together? Trinity and Emily, nose to tail in both of those Haas Automation cars, and they go to the point. How about Quentin Moore, that number 89, that updated number 89, I should point out. He's down to the inside. And he's going to make the move here 
to go underneath of Emily Anderson. Andrew Ramsey in that 52 for Andrew Ramsey Racing. Is now going to cut to the inside. Three wide for third. And currently the drivers, the two drivers that now hold on to those transfer spots. You see them there. First and third. Trinity Anderson and Andrew Ramsey. 51 and 52. With the three wide for the fourth position. How about Joshua Cornish coming to the inside? That's for, as, as I said, that's for fourth and Cornish trying to make it happen on the inside, making some noise. And there's Emily Anderson taking the top position away from her sister. And now the two drivers that could transfer into the 500. They're both side by side at the moment. Joshua Hyatt making a three wide for third. Ramsey getting to the inside of Emily Anderson. Eric Scott coming back up into the fray. How about Stephen Cologne? He's in the middle. He's near the front, however, but he is in the middle. Not necessarily the place that you want to be, but hey, it, it kind of gives you a little bit of experience in the middle line. As far as Stephen Cologne goes, he is a rookie in the NOS Energy Cup Series. He's never touched WRLA equipment until this past Monday. How about Henry Williams up there in that 31? Gonna try, gonna make it three wide for the lead here. G gets goes underneath the pole sitter. Now it's three wide for second as Eric Scott cuts back down in the inside. He got a pretty good run down the back straightway to clear both Williams and as well as Madison Tall. But Eric Scott goes to the point. Henry Williams and now Carter Friesen get to the inside. And that is for the top position. Just look at this field. They are three by three by three. All the way back to the back of the field. And now Carter Friesen jumps to the point. How about Haley Walker coming back into the picture? Hang on one second. All right, I'm back. Sorry. I uh, just had a little bit of crud in my mouth, and that was making it hard for me to actually kind of to commentate this whole thing. But Walker in the number 25, he's up to second position. Cody Smart up to third. Sam at Oskin right now, as well as Danny Bouchard hold on to those two transfer spots to lock themselves into the Daytona 500. And remember, we only have three spots available. Two are available in this duel. And in duel number two, there's only one spot available. You could say that there could be one spot available here, two in duel number two. But no matter which duel you say, that one spot will be up for grabs. It doesn't make a difference. These drivers are still going to go for everything that they've got. And now Daniel Bouchard takes advantage of... What Cody Smart was doing here, he left the bottom open as he was trying to get by his teammate. And Daniel Bouchard goes to the point. Not for much longer, though, because Al Legacy cuts to the, gets to the inside of Daniel Bouchard. We are past halfway. Ten down, ten to go. And these drivers right now are going to kick it into high gear. And they're going to start racing like there's no tomorrow. Especially... Drivers like Travis Crampton and Alita Therese because they have to race their way into the 500. And if they can manage that, that would be pretty big. As I said many times before with NS Racing, if they can lock themselves in, into the Daytona 500. Alita Therese jumps up to the top position. How about Elijah Gordon with a little bit of help from Trinity Anderson pushing him to the point. He didn't lead that lap this time around, but next time around, he's going to take over the top spot. Or will he? Trinity Anderson goes three wide for first place. And Trinity Anderson clears the 77 of Gordon and goes to the front. But not for much longer, though. Alex Hawkins, he might have something to say about it, but wait a minute. Kyle Langland making a three wide, this time for the top position. And Kyle Langland, who has to race his way in, goes to the lead. And he clears. All traffic, not for much longer. Stephen Cologne goes to the inside. And now, 
Kyle Langland is trapped up top and Cologne for Walker Family Motorsports goes to the point with a little bit of help from Quentin Moore in that 89, Emily Anderson, Derek Edison. We haven't talked a lot about Derek Edison. And now Edison is up here in that number 32. Making a three wide now. Looks like it's going to be for second as Stephen Cologne dives to the inside. And he gets away for just about a half a car length or so. But they're going to reel him right back in within a span of 0.5 seconds pretty much six or seven laps to go excuse me and now if Marty Johnson trying to win this duel so that way he can start third in the 500 but Stephen Cologne continues to hold off all challenges from the field behind him and Andrew Ramsey is up on the back bumper what kind of move is he gonna try to plan here He's going to cut to the inside, getting into turn three. No. He continues to look straight on the rear bumper of the Pepsi machine. Coming through four now, heading to the tri-oval. It's going to be six laps remaining. Joshua Hyatt moves up to third, but the, his teammate, however, <laughs> Henry Williams, cuts to the inside and is going to try to... Take over third. Jack Legacy has something to say about it, however. You only have about five and a half laps to go coming around. Once they hit the back straightaway, about halfway down the back straightaway, it's going to be about five and a half laps to go. And at the moment, the driver's currently holding on to those two transfer spots in this duel. One of them is Andrew Ramsey. Another one is Samet Osgin. Five to go. And it's go time. It's time to just stick it out. It's time to basically show what you got here in these final five laps of duel number one. Everybody just going for every inch that they can get on the racetrack. And Stephen Cologne at the moment, he is... He has been out front for at least more than three laps or so. And Jack Legacy is going to say, sorry, bud. I'm going to take over the top position now. And he cuts to the inside. He's going to go to the point, bringing Samet Osgin with him. How about Danny Bouchard? Well, Danny Bouchard's in the middle, but Al Legacy in that, in that 34, bringing Elijah Gordon, that number 77, right there in tow with four and four laps to go now. And Legacy continuing that he's trying to get down to the bottom, which he will do just that. And he's gonna try to and he's gonna take over the top position. More so try, because that outside line gets a really good run. And now Legacy gets put in the middle because his teammate Al Legacy goes underneath of Jack Legacy with three laps to go. And now the number 34 of Al Legacy goes to the point. Coming to three to go now. Gordon and Bright make it three wide for the top position. This is getting good. This is getting good. We're three by three from front to back. And Bright goes to the point bringing Trinity Anderson as well as Elita Therese. Remember, those two drivers have to race their way into the 500. Josiah Monsell doesn't have to, but Travis Crampton and Kyle Langland have to race their way into the 500. They desperately must race their way into the Daytona 500. And now Trinity Anderson goes to the inside to take over the lead, coming to two laps to go. And Trinity Anderson, if she can make the Daytona 500, that would be big, big news for her family, as well as for Emily Anderson, because that would mean both Anderson sisters would be in the Daytona 500. Travis Crampton's going to make a three wide, getting down into turn number one. Travis, at this rate, he's got to try stuff. He's got to go all out. And Travis Crampton is out front. They are three wide now for second. Coming to the white flag. 
and he's going to block Kyle Langland and Alex Hawkins. He cuts down from top to bottom, and here they come off of turn four. They're going to face the white flag. Travis Crampton, he could pull off an upset for NS Racing. He's leading right now, but will he be leading back, coming back to the checkered flag? We are on the last lap. Travis Crampton is out front. They're still three wide for second. Quentin Moore cuts to the inside of Joshua Cornish and as well as Alex Hawkins, who is stuck up top. And coming back down the back straightaway for one last time in duel number one, Travis Crampton could be smooth sailing from here, but don't look now. Quentin Moore's coming to the inside. And here they come through turn number four. This is going to be big. This is going to be a big photo. This is going to be a big finish coming to the stripe. And Quentin Moore coming out of turn number four is going to win. Axel to duel number one. And the drivers that will race their way into the Daytona 500 are Travis Crampton and Alita Torres. Those two drivers will make the Daytona 500. And ladies and gentlemen, NS Racing will have will field all four cars in the Daytona 500. Wow. I kept saying I kept saying that this would be a big accomplishment if NS Racing had all four cars in the field well guess what that accomplishment that I've been talking about has been has become reality and Nathan this has got to put a big smile on Nathan Stapleton's face because Travis Crampton has some has outlasted everybody else has, has outlasted pretty much Sam and Oscar, who was coming hard. He was coming fast. Coming up fast. And nonetheless, Travis Crampton was able to hold him off and earn a spot in the Daytona 500. Unfortunately, however, for Sam and Oskin, as well as for Danny Bouchard, Kyle Langland, Andrew Ramsey, Trinity Anderson, unfortunately for them, they will have to miss the Daytona 500 and they will have to pack their bags up and head over to Phoenix and get ready for Phoenix International Raceway. Well, that has been duel number one, folks. And coming up here, don't go away. Don't turn that knob. Don't even go to a different video. We will be right back to bring you Axel to duel number two next from here at Daytona International Speedway for the WLA NOS Energy Cup Series. And ladies and gentlemen, we are back for duel number two here in the WLA NOS Energy Cup Series. We have already figured out who's going to start on the inside line, who's going, who has made the Daytona 500, and who has gone home so far in the Great American Race. But now it has come to duel number two, probably going to be the most crazy, the most intense duel because there's only one spot available for the Daytona 500. And this is going to be the duel where I think it's going to be the one to watch with just all the crazy action that could potentially take place. This is going to be interesting. I am very much looking forward to this duel, and I hope you guys are too. So without further ado, I think I've done enough talking, and these drivers are strapped into their cars. They're ready to go. So with that being said, why don't we go trackside to get duel number two underway with a command to fire the engines. Race fans, are you ready? Drivers, start your engines! And the engines up and fired. Pace car is rolling off, and so are these 27 drivers. And as they hit the track for their pace laps, here's your starting lineup for duel number two.
This duel is gonna be wild. I mean, that's that's really all I can say because just of the fact that we are going to definitely see just a lot of drivers just go all out to try to get that one spot that is available for the 500. The Great American Race. It's the Great American Race. It's like the WrestleMania. It's like WrestleMania. It's like the Super Bowl. It's just like... It's just like the Chili Bowl. It's, this race... This race is just big. I don't really know what else to say, but that nevertheless, these drivers, like I said, they're gonna put it all on the line and get to try to go after that one spot that for the great american race the daytona 500 and with that being said here they come off of turn number four jesse turner and betty johnson with that brand new betty with that brand new stickers ford is going to lead the field of the green flag and get duel number two started bit more of a chaotic start this time around for duel number two as these drivers are just wasting no time going three wide already three rows deep and at the end of it all and at the uh forefront of it all daniel voiles and that wells fargo ford has taken over the top position and daniel voiles leads lap number one but he has put up top already three wide now for the race lead, Michael DeFeo, who has to race his way into the Daytona 500, that Twitter f Toyota Camry, goes to the point, trying to uh, get this comeback story underway by trying to make the Great American Race. And if he can pull that off, that would be absolutely huge for a guy like Michael DeFeo, who has been a part of the series ever since 2017 who unfortunately broke some rules and did some things that were against the the uh, quote-unquote rule book which is no longer a thing and he was suspended and that's that was that's what enabled Brittany White to take the wheel of the number 01 at the time for Long Island Motorsports and now Long Island Motorsports is back this time as a part-time team with Twitter on board and now you have a manual Hartnett right behind you one of two one of the two most winningest drivers in the in the WLA both with two wins Emmanuel Hartnett won an auto club of Watkins Glen and as for Ben Erickson who's coming up through the field and at number 96 he won at Phoenix and Michigan How about Amy Thomas in that 23 down to the inside taking over second from Christian Russell in that 35 that brand new updated nationwide Chevrolet Camaro now got put up now he's put up on the top side Andy Thomas with a little bit of help from Ben Erickson they go to goes to the lead and we're gonna be one-fifth of the way through the race and then the next lap it will be one quarter of the way through this duel but nonetheless how about that number 96 of Ben Erickson going to the inside. He's going to take over the top position. And Audra Baronowskis in that 29 is right there in tow. Nathan Stapleton, who who had watched all three of his cars in last in the last duel and saw Trav and we wa and watched bleh, and watched Travis Crampton make the Daytona 500, just barely make the Daytona 500. And seeing that, and just have him smiling so much, he was definitely, definitely, definitely that raises confidence level so much for this Sunday. And now he's going to go out and he's going to try to win this duel. And this could be NS Racing's year. You never know what could happen here. Anything can anything can happen here in a WLA. 
And here, NS Racing could have a big, big year in this organization. Chloe Erickson just barely led lap number five over, uh, Qu over William Brock. But the newly named Full Frontal Motorsports team went from William Brock Motorsports now to Full Frontal Motorsports. And William Brock going from the seven to the number 62. And now he has Osmond Hamid in the 48 to his inside. How about Betty Johnson making it three wide? Caleb Hoffman holding on to that one and only transfer spot that is available here in this race. And Caleb Hoffman, if he can actually if he can actually stay ahead of everybody, he could win this duel. And also make the Daytona 500 and send everybody else that has to make it in, and everybody else that has to get into the 500 via their via where they finish in the duel they have to go home he's gonna have to he's gonna send them home that is if he wins this duel and that is if he stays ahead of everybody else but nonetheless Evan Hunter and that 64 that red 64 is down there on the bottom I'm gonna get two birds with one stone as he gets underneath a Derek Hamill for the lead, but he's leaving that bottom line open for Veronica Platts to dive to the inside and that black number 78. And how about Hannah Higdon in that 99 right there in tow? Remember, she has to race her way into the Daytona 500 via basically the duel. If she can stay ahead of all the other drivers that she has to worry about, then she will make the Daytona 500 for Higdon Family Motorsports. And how about Nathan Orman and Daniel Voiles coming to the inside with a little bit of aid from one of Orman's drivers, Sebastian Kukalong. The 1 and the 24 down to the inside. Noah Clifton to the 84 way up top for his own team. Clifton Motorsports, Noah Clifton Racing. And now Hannah Higdon dives to the inside, takes over the top spot from Veronica Platts, at least for the moment. And now, here comes Nathan Orman to the inside of that Autism Speaks Chevrolet with the help from his teammate, Sebastian Kukulon, and that GameStop Chevy. That I got to tell you, some of these paint schemes look beautiful. And I have to tell you, some of the there are just some schemes that are just really good. Sebastian Kukulon's car is one of them, and now he's going to the inside of Nathan Orman, and his boss, or Kukulon's boss, is now up on the top side. Ben Erickson moves up into second. Michael DeFeo coming back into the fray, along with Audra Baranowskis, the first ever Lithuanian driver to compete in the NOS Energy Cup Series. And the man from the UK, Ryan Gondillo, coming up to the fourth position, at least trying to move up to the fourth spot. He was the fourth car on the inside line. Now he has an Aussie right behind him, and Annie Thomas. And Thomas moving her way up slowly but surely now here comes the number 10 of Michael DeFeo to the inside and we're gonna be halfway through this duel this time by and the driver as you see holding on to that one and only transfer spot is Michael DeFeo at least for the moment because the next driver on that inside line that could have a big chance it could have a really good shot at taking away that transfer spot is that 46 of Chloe Erickson because she's the fifth car on the inside line and she can definitely take that spot away Ryan Gundillo in that 58 goes to the goes to the point Annie Thomas right there in second and they're both gonna cut back from cut from the bleh. I can't even speak anymore cut from the top to the bottom and they are gonna still continue to lead this pack Nathan Stapleton in that 97 has moved up to the third position. Chloe Erickson now now has possession of that one transfer spot, but she goes up top. That was that was not a good decision whatsoever on the part of Chloe Erickson because now she puts herself up to the top side. 
That was definitely a big rookie mistake on Chloe Erickson's part because that enables Caleb Hoffman to take advantage of the mistake and go into that and take that transfer spot away. It's going to be eight laps to go this time by Gundillo still leads. William Brock has now jumped up to second. Betty Johnson now is under fire from Caleb Hoffman. And how about both advanced auto parts cars up here at the front of the field? Stapleton and Hoffman. You can definitely tell the difference between the two of them because of the paint schemes being so different. But nonetheless, down the back straightaway they go. And Caleb Hoffman currently holds on to that one transfer currently holds on to that one spot that can put him in the Daytona 500 and now he's going to the inside of both William Brock and Ryan Gundillo and he's going to take over the top position coming through turn number four How about Derek Hamill Emmanuel Hartnett Robert McDowell coming into the mix Now coming through turn number, not well, not turn four, but coming through the trial vol. Now back into turn number one. It's Derek Hamill taking over the race lead from Caleb Hoffman. Osman Hamman in that 48 could have a very good shot at taking over that spot, but you also have three more cars that have lined up on the inside line. They're at the tail end. Veronica Platts, Evan Hunter, and Hannah Higdon. They're down there on that inside line. And Derek Hamill is currently in command right now with his teammate Robert McDowell in that yellow, green, and looks like brown number 11, or orange, excuse me, number 11, who now is going to get put in the middle line by Alex Bonsignor. Six laps remaining. Osman Hamid now making it, making a triple file. For the for the second position and now Hamid goes to second. Just looking at this field, it looks like at, at some point they might end up wrecking, but you never know what could end up happening here within these final laps of this duel. Hamid goes to the inside, bringing Noah Clifton with him. And now you have Hunter or Platts, Hunter, and Higdon down there. On that bottom line, five laps to go. And Veronica Platz is making it three wide for the lead. Evan Hunter is there. Higdon as well. And right now those three cars have a legitimate shot of making the Daytona 500. Just as long as they get by Veronica Platz. Platz right now holds on to that spot. And now Hannah Higdon cuts the inside, but Jesse Turner is going to make it three wide now for third. Turner making it three wide for the third position as they come through turn number four. And Nathan Orman is right there as well. Veronica Platts out front. How about this? How about this? Jesse Turner. Remember, he starts outside pole for this race. And now he cuts to the inside of Evan Hunter coming through turns one and two. Heading down the back straightaway now. And Veronica Platts still holding on to that top position as they head down the back straightaway. And Veronica Platts has a very good chance of making the Daytona 500 if, the, if this continues to go her way. And Danielle Witter would definitely be very happy to see her number 78 go into the great American race three laps remaining how about Chloe Erickson and Michael DeFeo 46 and 10 they are coming up Johnny Gardner that number seven car for first place motorsports no sponsors on that number seven so if he were to if he were to get into the Daytona 500 which is still a pretty slim chance but you never know what could happen here in these final what about six miles now he could probably get into the 500 via the duel well via, not just via the duel but via winning the duel possibly two laps to go now and DeFeo has taken over the lead how about that number 29 of Audra Baranowska is cutting to the inside with a little bit of help from 
A little bit of help from Betty Johnson. Two to go now. Johnson will make it three wide for the lead. Johnny Garner is in a pretty good position. Johnny Garner should nothing go wrong. He's in a very good spot because he holds on to that one transfer position. Everybody else is right behind him. But you got to watch out for Caleb Hoffman in that 92. That black and red number 92 closing in. And coming around through turn four to the heading to the white flag. Johnny Garner. Is he going to hold on to that spot? Coming back to the checkered flag. That chance is slowly getting slimmer as we are on the last lap. Three wide in the meantime for the lead. Ryan Gundilla led him to the white flag. And now Robert McDowell coming to the inside. And there's Caleb Hoffman right alongside of Johnny Gardner heading down the back straight away. One last time, Zachary Taylor right there in second. Is he going to be able to get to the inside? No, he won't. And Caleb Hoffman holds, takes over that one transfer spot. And here they come off of turn number four. Robert McDowell for Hamill Racing Enterprise is going to win duel number two. And Caleb Hoffman clocks his way, or not clocks his way, but punches his ticket for the Daytona 500. Wow. I thought Johnny Gardner was going to have it, but once I saw Caleb Hoffman closing in fast, oh, man, I knew that was going to be good. That was going to be good, but, in the, but at the end of the day, it is Robert McDowell that wins duel number two. And Caleb Hoffman, with the third place finish, makes the Daytona 500. Unfortunately, however, for drivers like Osman Hamid, Johnny Gardner, Chloe Erickson, Michael DeFeo, Hannah Higdon, Evan Hunter, they will, or also, and also Veronica Platts as well. Unfortunately for those drivers, they will have to uh, go home and get ready for Phoenix next week. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. The, the, these, this, this has been the axle. These have been the axle to duels from here at the Daytona International Speedway. So we now know who's going to start where in the Daytona 500. We know now who has made the Daytona 500, and now we know the drivers that unfortunately will not make the Great American Race. It's a, it's a shame for those drivers that have failed to make the race. As you see the list of drivers that unfortunately have failed to make the Daytona 500 rolling up from the bottom to the top of your screen. And uh, unfortunately for them, they are going to have to wait until next weekend when we go to Phoenix International Raceway. And they will have to, and then they will be uh, doing racing their way in. They'll, they'll, blah, blah, blah. We'll do qualifying races for those drivers, and if they make the main roster, they will be in the main event. So for, for each and every week. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and uh, sign off for the night. Sign off for the rest of the night. So thank you guys so much for watching the Axel to Duels from here at Daytona. If you guys like this, be sure to give it a like. If you have not considered subscribing yet, I recommend you do so in order to keep up with some fine content coming out in the near future, as well as some other of your some other future episodes of your favorite podcasts coming out throughout the rest of this week and on to the next. I'm Elijah Leonard from the Leonard Station saying congratulations to the drivers that have won the duels. Congratulations to the drivers that have made the Daytona 500. And that about does it. This Sunday is the day for the Daytona 500, February 2nd, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And we hope you guys can make it for the great American race. I will see you guys then. But until then... Have a great rest of your night. We'll see you guys Sunday for the Daytona 500.